powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm David J. In for Dustin Kleeman. Family and friends celebrated the life of former First Lady Barbara Bush during a funeral service in Houston. There were tears, uh, but they were outnumbered by moments of laughter. Weijia Jang has more from Houston. 1,500 mourners, including four former presidents, attended the funeral service for Barbara Bush at St. Martin's Episcopal Church in Houston. Tributes to the former First Lady honored a life dedicated to public service and family. Barbara, the tough but loving enforcer, was the secret sauce of this extraordinary family. The 92-year-old Mrs. Bush was surrounded by loved ones when she died Tuesday. Former Florida Governor Jeb Bush eulogized his mother and talked about her final days. She said, Jeb, I believe in Jesus and he is my savior. I don't want to leave your dad, but I know I'll be in a beautiful place. Mrs. Bush herself planned many elements of the emotional service. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Her grandchildren read scriptures and served as pallbearers. The family's motorcade left here and rolled through Houston's Memorial Park, where Mrs. Bush would often walk with her dogs. People lined the route to say a final farewell. She was a great woman. She was loved by many people. Uh, she stood for what she believed in and she never backed down. How often do you get to see uh procession of the most the classiest first lady ever I mean that I know about and also you know Bush 41 is going to be by and I'll be saluting him as he goes by. Mrs. Bush was buried near her three-year-old daughter Robin in a private ceremony at George H.W.'s presidential library in College Station, Texas. Weijia Jang, CBS News, Houston. Mrs. Bush is survived by her husband, five children, 17 grandchildren and seven great-grandchildren. Meanwhile, President uh, Trump had uh, tweeted that progress is uh, being made as uh, North Korea said it will stop uh, nuclear tests. UN Ambassador Nikki Haley welcomed the announcement and praised the UN Security Council for coming together to achieve this goal. CBS News' Laura Podesta reports. North Korea says it no longer needs to test long-range missiles or nuclear weapons. The country's state media reported that its leader, Kim Jong-un, has suspended nuclear and long-range missile tests and closed a nuclear test site. President Trump tweeted, this is very good news for North Korea and the world. Big progress. Look forward to our summit. The president is expected to meet with North Korea's leader sometime in the next two months. Security Council. UN Ambassador Nikki Haley said pressure from the Security Council helped get to this point. In the case of North Korea, you can see the Security Council really came together and was able to enforce sanctions on North Korea, isolate them until they had good behavior. And now we're seeing they're wanting to come to the table. But the news was met with caution by some world leaders. The Prime Minister of Japan said what's important is that this development leads to complete, verifiable and irreversible dismantlement of North Korea's nuclear and missile programs. Australia's foreign minister echoed that sentiment. We need to see verifiable steps before we can be optimistic about the outcome. In the announcement, North Korea's state-controlled media said the focus now shifts to the country's economy. Laura Podesta, CBS News, New York. The surprise announcement also comes ahead of talks uh, next week between Kim Jong-un and South Korea's President Moon. Here in Montana, the Diocese of Great Falls Billings responded to the Facebook post by a Great Falls priest who wrote about the annual Mayfair fundraiser leadership involving a couple engaging in a homosexual behavior. Father Ryan Erlenbush, who grew up in Billings, posted on his Facebook page earlier this week. He stated, you know a Catholic school has lost its way when a prominent homosexual couple is advertised as the chairs for the annual fundraiser. Why would any Catholic, indeed any Christian, intend or donate to Mayfair 2018. What does a Catholic school have to do before people say enough and take their kids and their money elsewhere? I'm an alumnus of the Billings Catholic Schools and I say enough. Bishop Michael Warfill stated in a letter that will be in church bulletins tomorrow, in a nutshell, I support Billings Catholic Schools and value the contribution they make toward the education and formation of children and youth. I also remind all that Catholic teaching is 
clear regarding homosexuality, distinguishing between inclination and behavior that is contrary to the moral teaching of the church. And with summer uh, coming soon, it's uh, become an important discussion about how best to manage fires, both logistically and economically. Senator John Tester was in Missoula today to discuss how to move forward without burning the bank. More from Missoula. 2017 was the most expensive wildfire season ever for the state of Montana, and the damage done to both environments and budgets has left the state and Washington looking for a solution. Following a staggering $2.4 billion forest fighting effort, consuming more than half of the Forest Service budget, Senator John Tester drafted the Fire Grants Reauthorization Act, which would allow the government to provide grants to local and rural fire departments. Tester had a roundtable Saturday with representatives from the lumber industry, forest networking coordinators, the Dean of the Forestry Department at the University of Montana, and directors from State Resource Management and Forest Land. At the roundtable, they spoke about the future of fighting wildfires proactively and focusing on what has been called fire borrowing. Fire borrowing is a budgetary practice that occurs when federal agencies divert funds from forest health and fire prevention programs to fight wildfires. This means that during a fire season, the Forest Service doesn't have the infrastructure to maintain trails, campgrounds, or work on any projects. Through grants and collaboration with industry, they hope to change that. Uh, they would just stop all other work. Projects that could otherwise um, proceed just stop. If we have an industry that's working in the woods, uh, it's not all taxpayer dollars at risk. And in fact, we can end up even creating economy that can help contribute to forest restoration. A charter project conducted by the Department of Natural Resources showed that when collaborating with the lumber industry, they are able to save nearly a million dollars on restoration projects outside of Helena. Could have been a million dollar restoration project uh, solely funded through taxpayer money. What it turned out to be is a $1.1 million restoration project with upwards of $900,000 uh, paid for by the timber company because they purchased the logs. The law also overturned the Cottonwood decision, a Ninth Circuit ruling that stonewalled important timber projects. This will bring new enthusiasm for those uh, partnerships uh, to, that they're going to get something done, that they're not going to just sit around a table and talk, but they'll actually get practices on the ground. Reporting in Missoula, Donal Akatua, MTN News. Senator Tester spent the last two days meeting with experts to discuss wildfire management and homeland security and local law enforcement. More than 3,000 uh, boxes of cookies are uh, getting back to Billings. That's how many uh, Girl Scouts in Billings sold today to honor their scout sister, Chloe Lai, who died from influenza in February. Girl Scout Troop 2345 sold cookies at four Master Loop stores in Billings. Chloe Lai was a member of Troop 2345 and a fourth grader at St. Francis. Chloe's goal the last three years was to sell 3,000 boxes of Girl Scout cookies. The girls are helping Chloe's parents who want to reach that goal for Chloe. Chloe took everything to heart, everyone, everything. She was a very sweet person and she will always be in everyone's heart. And if she didn't even know you, you would become her best friend, even if you didn't even know her. She was just that sweet. One of the Girl Scouts mottos is, you know, be a sister to every Girl Scout. They definitely are learning that through this whole process, and Chloe was definitely a sister to every Girl Scout. When I presented the idea um, to the moms in our troop, there wasn't a dry eye in the room. Everybody was on board. Everybody has put something forth in order to make this happen. And Tammy Degley says that uh, many from around the country donated on the Girl Scouts of Montana and Wyoming website. She says earlier tonight the total sold was 3,200, but the Girl Scouts are still counting, and she expects that number to be even bigger. Hundreds of uh, middle school girls, uh, meanwhile, expanded their scientific knowledge in Bozeman today. Montana State University students led the middle school through high school students. Activities focused on teaching the girls about science, technology, engineering, and math. The Build Your Future in Architecture activity allowed students to learn about different building designs and structures. These are opportunities that a small town like ours doesn't get very often because we usually have to participate in things um, separately because we don't have, our, our school doesn't have, either doesn't have the budget or the time, but it's a great opportunity to have. And the girls also had the opportunity to do other activities like making jewelry and examining DNA. 
Over in Great Falls, the CM Russell uh, Museum held a private viewing party to unveil one of Charlie Russell's paintings. This painting had been uh, created over the past three decades. Death of a Gambler was painted in 1904 while Charlie and his wife were in New York City. The executive director says the museum is fortunate enough to have the piece on loan and give the community an opportunity to view another one of Charlie's stories. This is one of the, the fun parts of art and I think for art collectors. There's some pieces like this one, Death of a Gambler, that sometimes get into private collections and they don't see the light of day for a number of years. The painting will be on display until May. And now joining us, uh, Connor Pezzagura, uh, you were telling us that uh, you uh, kind of like to look a little bit at the history of the weather as well. So you've got some good, good things for us tonight. Yeah, I do like to take a look at that, especially on a beautiful day like today when everyone's talking about how it's above average. I know that's something we as meteorologists tend to say quite a little bit of, but I think that's a little bit of a trap. And I went back and looked at our almanac. So our t temperature today was 72, normal high was 59, but those normal numbers are crafted based on long-term averages and rarely reflect the actual temperatures. For example, here's April 21st temperatures going back 10 years. Now, there's not a single day in this study that was 59 degrees. So that average temperature is not a prediction, but rather just a measure of the way things tend to be. So don't look at those numbers as gospel, but rather just something that we can a, a range that we can expect don't fall into that trap but I think regardless of where these numbers fall we could all look at a day like today and think that it was indeed well above average and something that we enjoyed I've got a little bit more of that in the forecast for you I'll outline that for you coming up in just a bit for now we go back to David okay thank you Connor